just to recap then, we, we, we don't need to wait for crab symptoms anymore. If there's high myoplasma cytosis, high free light chain, the hemoglobin's dropping or the proteins are rising, there's, there's more and more patients being considered treatable. So let's just talk about that for a minute because it's still in the research realm a little bit. Dr. Bensinger or Bill, are you, uh, are you treating smoldering myeloma today? And if so, how? So I'm a little more circumspect about who should be treated. I think that patients who have more than 60% plasma cell involvement, patients that had lesions on MRI or PET, I think clearly uh, are gonna need treatment sooner rather than later. Um, I sort of share Jayton's concern about the free light chain alone, because I found it to be rather labile. I've seen patients who will have a free light chain ratio of over 100, and then you'll check them again in two weeks, and it's now 60. And so what does that mean? They're no longer over 100. Are they suddenly not, not need to be, do they not need to be treated? And so I'm a little bit um, concerned about treating a patient just on the basis of the free light chain level. So I, I thought in the, in the presentation yesterday, maybe I got this wrong, but that something like 70% of smoldering myeloma patients in that analysis from Mayo got active myeloma within 10 years. So, Ola, do you think, you know, given they're basically all going to end up with myeloma at some point, shouldn't we just treat them all early or why are we <laughs> waiting? Well, um, I think that's a, that's a very good question. I, mean, I don't think we know really the answer, what the right thing is to do, obviously. So in my practice, I would not treat the patient with smoldering myeloma outside a clinical and trial. Why is that? Because we don't know the answer to this question. And I think uh, putting patients on therapy for the wrong reason, uh, that would not be the right thing to do uh, as a clinician. I do think uh, the research is indicating that probably there are patients that really will benefit from it, but I think we also need to capture that data. So if we start treating patients outside trial, we will never be able to capture it. And I think, I think the downside with that we will be we will over-treat many patients. So I would strongly advocate How the trials. How can you over-treat if they're all going to get myeloma? Is that over-treatment? Well, we know that there are patients that are labeled as smaller myeloma that after very many years of follow-up, they will actually not develop myeloma. So I think it's a little bit like you have a prostate cancer or breast cancer. You, you give a lot of therapy for patients that may not need it. So we don't want to go there with myeloma. We have the chance to now stop you, that. You've actually run a clinical trial where, where you did treat patients with high-risk high smoldering myeloma. And, uh, tell us about that, because that was really fascinating. Yeah, we have done several studies. The first trial we developed in 2011 was with Kyprolis Revdex. We did... Uh, Carfilzomib. Yeah, Carfilzomib Revdex uh, for... Carfilzomib lenalidomide dexamethasone. Carfilzomib lenalidomide dexamethasone for eight cycles. Uh, we treated so far 17 patients on that trial. Uh, we had 100% complete response rate in the first 12. Uh, and when we added additional five, uh, the complete response rate is 16 out of 17. One patient is VGPR. Uh, because the trial was open in 2011, uh, the criteria at the time were not there with a 60% cutoff. But I can tell you that that 17th patient that is VGPR was actually 60% plasma cell infiltration. Uh, we have uh, up to three years of follow-up, and to my knowledge, none of those patients have converted back to myeloma. Uh, they all remain MRD negative, the ones that were uh, in CER. But I think it's important to emphasize, so this is a fantastic result, right? Three years of complete remission. Right. How many cycles of, of KRD did you give? We gave eight cycles, eight followed cycles. by two years of maintenance. And no mind. relapse after three years, so right. it, it does make you wonder. Well, you know, I'm going to stand with all. I think we have to be careful. I probably wouldn't treat most of the smoldering, but I think the studies that refine this, the risk within smoldering are helping us a lot. Um, I, I like to categorize crab into the claws of the crabs and the legs of the crabs. And the claws of the crabs for me are the renal failure and the bone disease. And what I mean by that, that's the dangerous part of crab. Anemia and hyperglycemia can be corrected. So I think we need good biomarkers for renal disease. We have that with a free light chain. We, we need better biomarkers for bone. Uh, but but as, as we incorporate this in a dynamic way of following patients, I think you're right. We shouldn't let the patient present with a fracture. But then we don't want to be treating the thousands of patients with smoldering who are probably not going to progress for many years. So, I, so Bill, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I think that there is a concern here about treating smoldering myeloma. What's changed is we now have drugs that at least in some very early trials have shown a difference in outcome, mainly survival for patients with high-risk smoldering as, as they're defined in the particular trials. 
But you have to be careful because I think you, you can overtreat patients that may not ever need treatment in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. And there's the cost of the drugs and the side effects of the drugs. And that all has to be balanced. So I think if we can define the patients that need this treatment in the smoldering group, that's going to be a huge advance. So the summary, give me different. a summary for the community oncologist of our, our discussion. Just wrap up for us here, Jayden. What, what, what should the community oncologist know about what to do with our smoldering myeloma patient today? So I think it's important to acknowledge it's a very difficult diagnosis to make, first of all. So absolutely. But I think the key message here is that we are changing now. We're trying to identify patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma. So patients who have those features that are defined by OLA, including an MRI lesion, a bone marrow plasma cytosis, or a high free light chain ratio, and maybe as we move forward, an evolving process. And those patients are likely to progress in the next 18 to 24 months. It's very reasonable to start therapy in those patients early to prevent, as Raphael described, the claws of the crab, and try and prevent some of these end organ damage and maintain quality of life for those patients. Beyond that, for other patients with smoldering, I think we want to start treating those patients early, but we need more data. So intuitively, I think we as physicians, as patients, um, as part of the healthcare community, want to treat those patients, but I think we need more data to drive that decision because of the cost of these therapies, long-term outcomes. There are some side effects with all these drugs. So I think that we have to be very careful that we're excited. That's where the future may be going. But for now, for those patients, I think the ultra-high-risk patients, as we define, are important to consider for early intervention.